Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Yesterday I was looking around for a project to do, just something quick, and I was thinking about the little miniature pot holders that you put your hands and fingers into. And just as I was thinking that, somebody on YouTube in the comments had actually requested the same thing. So here it is. Little hand pot holders, or little miniature Pac-Mans. <laughs> Hang around and I'm gonna show you how to make these. The first thing that we're going to do is take a couple of pieces of paper or tracing paper, whatever you want as your pattern. This is uh, some good card stock. And I've cut my paper out at five and a half inches across and seven and a half inches in length. So we want five and a half inches and seven and a half inches. Once you've done that, mark the center line. So half of that is two and three quarter inches and draw a line down the center here. Now you need to find a plate and you want a plate to measure across the span of your card. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit big. So just line that up evenly both sides and then we're going to mark a circle or an arc. So we've got our half circle or arc there. At the bottom we want to come out and measure three inches all up. So from the center line we're just going to measure one and a half inches. So we've got one and a half inches to the center line and then one and a half inches out there. So we've got a marking just there. And that will measure three inches across. From there, we're going to come up from the base another three inches. So I've lined up the three inch line at the bottom of my card and I'm just going to make a line across here. And then from this line, we're going to meet up with the outside one and a half inch line. So just take your ruler and put it on the angle and do the same for the other side. And just check that you've got three inches across the bottom and this is three inches from the bottom. So what we're doing here, this one here is three inches. This is five and a half inches across and this is three inches at the bottom. Now we can take our ruler and measure three inches from the top. So here we've got three inches. We've got five and a half inches across the side and overall we've got seven and a half inches in length. Now this piece here is the template for the entire main part of your little pot holders. Okay from our template pieces what I've done is cut two in the pink, two in the peacock feather and that will give us two mitts. Then I've got two pieces of Insel Bright, one to go in each mitt, and then we have two pieces of a lightweight cotton batting or a pallon, whichever you prefer to use. So that's our main hand template. For the fingers, we want two of these cut on the fold. So that's the fabric on the fold with the template like that, and we'll have two of those. And the same for the thumb area. We've got two elongated hexagons, basically. So it's a piece of fabric, cut on the fold, open it out. And it's, it's just less sewing this way. You don't have that extra seam to do. So we've got two of those. Now you don't have to do this, but I do actually prefer to have a little bit of stabilizer in here. Uh, rather than just having two pieces of fabric stitched together, I'm going to go and put a really lightweight dressmaker's interfacing on this and that'll just give just a tiny little bit of stability. I don't want any padding in there, it'll add too much bulk, but I do just want something a little bit more crisp than just the fabric. I've pressed a fusible interfacing, just a really lightweight fusible interfacing to the wrong side of these fabrics. And all I want to do is just fold that in half 
with all of these pieces and we're going to top stitch on that folded edge so we're just going to do a top stitch on the folded edge of the circle and the hexagon so we'll do that for all four pieces so just a 1 8 inch top stitch along the folded edge that's folded over nicely stitched down and it just gives a nice crisp feel to the pockets now we can start building our layers we've got our main body and this is right side up we take our finger area place that over the top there and we take the thumb section place that over the top we'll take our contrasting fabric lay that face down and then we can take our two pieces of wadding and place those on top as well so we want one of the wadding and one piece of insole bright and we can clip all of those layers together once we've got all of this clipped together we can take it to the machine and stitch the whole lot down now we need to leave an opening for turning through the best place to do that is on a straight edge so whichever you prefer if you want to leave the bottom edge open and we can turn that through that way and then stitch it closed afterward or you can leave one of the sides open just as long as it's a straight side or even this side here it's probably easier along the bottom but look that's going to come down to personal choice I think I'm going to go with the bottom let's stitch this together start at the bottom and we've got our opening down there first thing we want to do is clip our edges on the curve and just trim our seam allowance Don't clip the opening at the bottom. We've clipped the rest of it really close to the edge and we can turn that through. So push all of your edges out on the curve there so it sits nice and smoothly. Do that all the way around. So I've just got my fingers inside there and we need to close up this section at the bottom. So we'll just close that up and then we will top stitch down. I'm just going to go and top stitch that down at the bottom edge there and then give this a good press. So the bottom edge is closed up and nice and secure and then we're done. There we go. So a couple of handy little pot holders to add to your collection of pot holders and oven mitts that you might have in your kitchen at the moment. I haven't made these before. This is the first time. So I did play around with the pattern, trying to get the sizing right. And whilst the piecing together was really easy, the sewing together is really easy. Just having a small opening at the bottom or even on the side was a little bit tedious for me this isn't a project that i'm likely to make to sell in the shop because it's a little bit too fiddly and time consuming for me it's a great gift idea if you can think of a faster way of sewing the ends together then i'd certainly be up for making these in the shop i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope showing you how to make your own template has helped it's actually not really hard to design your own products you've just got to have an idea and be willing to play and have lots of mistakes as well so it's actually i actually really enjoy designing templates and patterns i'm going to go and try out my new pot holders on some hot pots catch you next time